Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. We're gonna wait for just a minute and then we will get started. Thank you so much everyone for joining me tonight. We're gonna to be creating a really fun mermaid card in the ocean scene with the new slimline dies. So the products I'm gonna be using tonight is first our Slimline Frame Basics die. This one was just released this weekend, available in the shop. We are also going to be using the new Sparkle and Shine stencil. We are going to be using the Calliope, or Calliope, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but you are strange and wonderful, this adorable little mermaid and her coordinating outline die. Hi! Hi, Kevin. Hi, Ann. We are going to be using the Under the Sea six-piece die set. And then, of course, my favorite, one of my favorite dies, the sentiment die that says magical. This one is so much fun and such a great size for cards. And it works perfectly with the slimline card bases. And then, of course, our really awesome slimline card bases that come with the coordinating envelopes. Everything is all ready there for you to make quick and easy cards. And those are available in the shop, too. Hi, Betty. Welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight, everyone. Okay, so let's go ahead and we are going to get started. I'm going to start with coloring first. I went ahead and I pre-colored the Sweet Mermaid skin because you guys have seen me do the skin tone quite a bit. And um, if you need to know how to do the skin tone, you can look back in our videos that are saved to this group and it will show you a bunch of different videos where I show how to color the skin. What I want to focus on tonight for you guys is some really fun colorful mermaid hair and how to do some fun like rainbowish scales. Alright so let's get started. I think I'm going to start with, let's go ahead and start with her tail tonight. And I'm going to show you guys how to do some scales. So we're going to start with purples first. Hi Anne, welcome. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys get a better view of this sweet little stamp. I went ahead and I pre-stamped her and I cut her out as I always do. Um, my reasoning behind this is because if I don't have to worry about having the die shift when I'm cutting it and I've done all that coloring and it you know, doesn't, doesn't cut it out properly. So I always stamp cut out. Then I use just a little bit of washi tape on to just a scrap piece of paper and then I just set it on there. So then I know she's perfectly cut out and when I color her I don't have to worry about, you know, cutting off part of her tail or her hair because I misalign it. Okay, so I'm going to get started. We're going to use V09 to start for our purples. I'm going to do half of her tail purple, the other half turquoise, and then I'm going to do pink up here on her little skirt and her shells. So to do these little scales, hi Nicole, welcome. I'm going to be using my dotting technique, which I do a lot, but I'm also going to be making these little, little scale shapes like that. So this is our darkest shadow, and I'm going to start this just on this corner edge. So here I'm going to do just a few little textures. You're not going to do them all over. I'm just going to add a couple of these to indicate that she has these little scales on this tail. And I'm only sticking to this left side, because remember, I'm going to be doing the left side purple and the right side turquoise. Hi Katya, hi Ebony, yes we're doing purple, this is V09. I will list all of these colors down below. This is going to be our darkest shade for the purple color. So again, I'm just going to pull that texture through. And just like this, how I drew right there, I'm just doing that in miniature form and mixing it up here on this left side. Make sure you have a few of these coming out from underneath this little skirt portion here because you want to make sure that it looks uniform and then up here I'm just going to add a couple of little dots and now I'm going to also add a few little dots along the very edge of her tail here building up a couple of them going over some of these little scales we drew 
If you feel like you need another little scale or two, you can always add those in. And they're just little scallop lines like that. Hi, Katya. I'm so happy all you guys are joining me tonight. Thank you. I love sitting down and crafting with you guys. Okay. So again, just layering these, adding a couple of little dots along the side edge of this tail. So that's going to be good for our shadows to start building up that texture, as you guys can see. Okay, so now we're going to start the other side with the shadows. And I'm going to move on to my darkest for my teal for my aqua, which is going to be BG09. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, but on this opposite side. I'm going to make sure I still keep a small light space that has no scales on it in the center of this tail. So again, just go through, add a few of these little scallop lines. like that. Pull those under to give just indication of them where her little skirt part is. And then of course add a couple of little texture dots along this right edge. You're going to layer a few of them over the scales that you just drew, but you still want some little white highlights going through so it still keeps that sparkle. So just like that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to, I'm going to add a little bit darker tone to this because this is more of a medium tone. I want it a little bit more um, contrasting like the left side. So I'm going to pull in B39 Prussian Blue. And I'm just going to go over some of those darkest little scales with this. So I'm just tracing over the ones I just did. It just wasn't quite the pop of color. So you guys can always adjust as you go if you feel like you need a darker shade in there. And we're going to be layering colors anyway, so it doesn't matter that we did that medium tone. We would have used that anyway. All right, now we're gonna move on to, we'll finish building up this turquoise since we're over here. I'm gonna move to BG18. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to layer over a couple of little texture dots, not all over, but just going over some of the shadow area and then pulling a couple a little bit further into your white section just to add a little bit of variation. Oh, thank you so much, Ebony, thank you. And now I'm gonna pull in BG15, and we're gonna do the same thing. Just layer right over the top of the ones we did and pull a couple of other dots further towards the white section. And this layering over one another is what's gonna really make it look like scales. I will need to use, oh yeah, I just used the very tip of the marker. So you can see here where the little tip is. I'm literally like holding it straight up and down when I do these dots and then I'm just adding the little dot like that. If you go to the side and do it, you can see they get a little bit bigger. So just practice going to the tip of the marker. If you don't really, if your tip is worn down, you may need to change out the tip of your marker to get the really fine dot. Okay, I'm going to move on to BG13. And I'm going to add a couple of more of little dots, like I said. Have a couple of them go out towards the center section. And now to finish off that section, we're going to be using BG10. At this point, we're going to pull a few of those dots into the center of our tail towards that purple color. And since this is such a light tone, you're going to want to pull some of this through the purple, and we're going to do the same thing when we get to the purple with the turquoise. 
So there we go. So now we have all of our little scales done for the turquoise. Now we're going to move on to finish up our purple side. So we started with V09. I'm going to move on to V06. And if you guys miss these colors, remember I'll put these in the comments after this live, the colors we used. So again, I'm just going to add a few little dots starting along this left edge and then pulling just a couple towards the center. Just like that. So all I'm doing is just like this, but smaller. And there we go. And now we're going to move on to V04. And the same thing as before, you're going to layer over the shadowed area, the furthest edge, just a couple of dots, and then pull a couple more towards the far edge of your shading. Oh, thank you, Anne. I know, these are my favorite colors too. I love the purples and the turquoise and blues. I'm going to move on to V15. And same thing, just layer over these colors. You really want a variation in color and texture. So even some of these dots, if they're not perfectly the same, that's okay because it makes it look more organic when you have the different variation. And then last but not least, we're going to be using V01. Oh, thank you, Joanne. And we are going to just go over that section. Remember, this is our lightest tone for the purple, so we're going to pull a few of these towards the turquoise into the turquoise section. This is going to help blend those two colors together. And also, if you had a tail like this, it, some of these little sequins or shimmers scales would be picking up reflection from the other side. So that's why you want to pull both colors into each other from both sides. And then to finish off the little tail, hi Debbie, hello Dana, I'm using my Jelly Roll pen, hello Carrie, thank you. And going to add, just like we did before, you're going to add a few little dots and then a few little lines. So these same little scallop lines I did, I'm going to do a few of these with the gel pen. And then just a couple of little dots just to pick up the shimmer on those scales. There we go. So now you can see there's your little tail. All done in the multi-tone. And if you got a little bit too much of that shimmer on the side, you can always take your colorless blender and you can tone down the very edge. I'm just dotting it. And the colorless blender erases that um, gel pen. So if you ever get a gel pen somewhere you don't want it, just use your colorless blender. It takes it off. So there. Now we have just a little bit of sparkle, not overdone. Okay, so now we can move on to her tail fins and then the little top of her outfit. I want to do those in pink. So I'm going to start with RV04. And I'm going to add in my little details first. So for this little skirt, I want to add in her folds. So I'm just going to pull a few little fold lines here. This is what really makes coloring come to life is adding your own little details to it. One of my favorite things to do. So you can see I just added a couple of little fold lines. You can always use a little pencil, mechanical pencil, if you don't feel comfortable drawing in them in at first with your Copic marker or colored pencil. So then you can just erase and then fix it and get it exactly how you want it. Oh, thank you so much, Ebony. Thank you. And now I'm going to add those same little details onto her little fins here. Um, I'm going to turn it this way so I can pull these fin lines towards myself. It makes it a little easier. So I'm pulling a little detail line there. I'm going to do three on this little tail. Add a little shading there. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm just turning this so I can make sure I pull the lines towards myself because it's easier for me to get a thinner or thicker to thinner line for this. So just pulling three little thin lines and then adding just a thin line of shading to the edge of the, of the tail. And then turning that back around. I almost forgot. So the bottom of her little skirt, we're going to want to pull a couple of little folds from that side too. So I'm just going to mirror what I did at the top and then pull those two lines since this third line would probably be turned to the back side of that little fold there. And then this one would probably only have one fold showing. So there we go. Got your little details added in. And now we can finish adding our shading here. I'm going to just add a little bit of shading to the inside of this fin here on both edges to the side of the, the belt or the top of her little skirt. And then her little bra top, I think, hmm, do we want to do it in purple or pink? What do you guys think? Shells, purple or pink? First comment, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Twyla. Okay, purple. Hi, Beth. All right, so we're going to do purple for her shells. So we'll do her shells after we finish the skirt, then we'll do that in purple. RV21 is what we're going to use next for her little skirt. And as you can see, I always clean off my marker but before I start coloring because if I picked up any previous color, I don't want to pull that into my, my section. So I always make sure I just do a little line here before I start coloring on my project. All I'm doing is going over the lines I just did. So this little shadow section, I'm just literally tracing over those lines. And then same thing on this bottom section. And then here on the sides of her little belt, I'm just pulling that side a little bit further, just like feathering it like that. Oh, thanks, Beth. And you can go over these areas a couple of times if you feel like it's too much of a change from your darkest shadow to this next color you can build up the color. And now here on her little fins, we're gonna pull, just like if you were doing hair, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull these lines towards myself. So I'm going to just go right over them, make them extend slightly further. And then we go over that shadow on the very edge. Same thing here on this bottom fin. Pulling those lines and then going over that shadow at the top. And then any ones you feel like need need to be gone over again, just quickly do that same line. Okay, now we can move on to our next color in the pink lineup, which is going to be RV10. And just like before, you're just pulling that color, going over the lines you just previously did. And with all of these layers, it's just going to start blending out mostly on its own. You don't have to worry about extending those lines much further. I'm just blending out this top area so it doesn't have a hard line. And then same thing on this little skirt. I'm just going over those lines that I drew, trying to still keep some of that white highlight in between those sections. And then on her belt, I'm just extending it towards the center, but still leaving a small area where it's a white highlight. Oh, thank you, Anne. Thank you. Okay, so then I'm going to be using RV000. This is where we're going to finish blending out these areas. You're not covering up all your white though. I'm just pulling some of these lines towards the center. 
and connecting them but you're still going to have some little strips of white show through so it will still show up like a highlight and then same thing on her little belt the top band okay now I'm going to be using I want to make this pop a little bit more vibrant because her tail is such a good contrast so I'm going to use RV29 this is where I'm just going to go over the very edge of the shadow areas. This red crimson color is really going to make this pink pop hot pink. So you can see I'm just going over the very top edges of those lines. This is going to match that contrast of the darker tail areas. So just like that, going over just the tiniest little lines, re-pulling them back through, and then following along the very darkest shadows with this red, and it's going to make it look hot pink. Same thing on the very edges of her little belt, and then the little folds on the other side. Now, Tamir, since we have a little dot texture, we want to kind of add that through some of her tail area. So I'm just going to add with this a couple of little dots. You guys know me and these little dots. I love them. So I'm just adding a couple for more detail. And there we go. Now her little tail is all done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Ebony. Okay, so now we can move on to her little seashell bra. And we're going to do that in purple tones. So we're going to start with our darkest shade of, for purple, which was our V09. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. And this, we're just going to go over these little... You can see on here, there's already drawn some little fold lines, so I'm just going to use the very tip of the marker, and I'm going to re-go over those fold lines with my shadow tone. Just like that. And same thing on the other side. This little shell bra is really small, so you need to be really careful with the dots that you make for this to add your shadow. And then on this left and right edge, you're going to want to add... A little bit of shading and now we're going to move on to our V06 thank you Anne thank you and same thing we're going to go over the shading at this point we're going to go along the bottom edge of her little bra and the right side and then we're just going to re go over those little fold lines pretty much just putting three little dots since it's so small and delicate. And now we're going to skip through our purple colors because if we do too many, it's going to cover up all that white. So we're going to move right to our last two colors, which is our V15. And at this point, we're just going to add a couple of little dots for the shading because it is such a small small area and we still want the light to shine through and then last but not least we're going to use VO1 and the same thing we're just literally adding a couple of dots you still want those white highlights to come through but you want this to read as purple and then we use our gel pen to add some highlights to this so I'm going to be doing like a little half smile up on the top of the bra and then just a couple of little dots so it shimmers like the rest of her tail so there we go we've got her little top all done okay so now we are going to work on her hair I was thinking we could do two-tone color uh, maybe pink to purple or we could do, hmm, yeah, let's do pink to purple. I think that would be pretty. So we're going to start with our pink first. The so same thing, our darkest shadow. We're going to start with the red for this, the RV29. And we're going to add in our darkest highlights. So let's see. 
Um, how about we do it purple to pink, so it's a little bit different. So we'll do the pink down here. I'm going to just pull these sections. You can see they're already pre-drawn for you, so you're just going to kind of mirror like the curve of the sections, just like that. And it's okay if you don't get it perfect because this is kind of wavy mermaid hair. It will look good when we blend it all out. So I'm just following through some of these little like wavy lines, varying some of the, the um, length of these lines. But I'm just starting to separate these little hair sections. So just like that. And I want just the tips of her hair to be pink and then the top of it to be purple. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And then here too, where her little side of her hair is, I want this portion to have a little bit of pink in it. So I'm just pulling that shadow around. Okay. Now we can add in our actual pink, which is VO4. We're just going to go over those same little lines and we're going to extend them slightly further. So you're just tracing over the lines you did and then making that line go maybe an eighth of an inch further. So same thing here. I'm not adding new lines. I'm just tracing over the lines I just drew in. And if you need to go over the line a couple of times to get it to curve the way you want it to with the hair, that's fine. Sometimes I do that to straighten my shading up for the hair sections. As you can see it's starting to look hot pink now instead of red. Some of these you want to pull into the rest of the hair. And then same thing here. Let's see, this one here I want to pull up into her hair a little bit more, just like that. Oops, I forgot this little strand. Sometimes it helps to stand back and look at it too to see if you forgot any strands. Okay, we're going to move on to RV21. And the same thing as before. Oh, thank you, Debbie. We are just going to go trace right over the lines we did and then extend maybe an eighth of an inch further. We're just following the shape that is already there. I'm going to turn this around because it's easier to pull these strands towards myself. Now, if you're worried about doing the wavy lines, you can always practice like how the wave goes on the side of her hair strand before you actually draw it onto her hair strands. But the more you practice these little wavy lines, the easier they'll get for you. Just like that, pulling those little strands up into her hair. And then check to see if you missed any little sections. Okay, I'm going to move on to RV10. And same thing, we're going to pull these little strands towards the rest of her hair. Some of this is going to overlap into our purple, but these colors are so light that it will make it look like a really pretty color shift. So same thing, I'm pulling that through. I'm making these lines a little bit wavy like the rest of her hair lines are. And then same thing here on this bottom section. Just 
And now we are going to move on to our last color, which was RV000 for the pink. And same thing as before. Just going over those, pulling the color a little bit further into the hair. And making sure we follow that wave pattern. Okay, so now we're done with the purple strands. Now we're going to, or the pink strands, now we're going to move on to the purple. So we're going to start with our darkest shadow for the purple, which is our V09. And we're going to do the same thing, but the opposite way. So we're going to start at the top of our hair this time. We're going to add in our little shadow lines. So just like that, just pulling these lines, following the way that these are drawn, these little waves that are already there for you. like that. And now same thing on this opposite side of her hair part. Since this side is such a short area before you get to that pink, you don't want to pull these this side of the lines very far. And now underneath her hair, this part would be purple. So we're going to pull this purple line from underneath that part there. Pulling these through. And then adding a small shadow to the underneath part of her hair. I'm just going right along that bottom edge. I'm going to add this a little bit. Fix that line there. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Trisha. Yes, definitely watch the re replay if you missed any of these parts. Okay, now we're going to move on to V06, and the same thing, like I said before, you're going over the lines we just did, but extending them slightly further, about an eighth of an inch. Sometimes I go over these a couple of times if I need to straighten them out, or I didn't get the, the line quite right. You could add another little hair strand in. Just like that. Same thing on this opposite side. And now here underneath her hair. Making sure to pull some of these highlights or these uh, shadows through. Just like that. Let's see. I think I'm going to make a couple of these a little bit longer on this top portion. Maybe pull one coming from there. There we go. Okay. Now we can move on to V04. And same thing as before. We are just going to go over these little lines. And pull this shading a little bit further. Following the little curve that is already there for you. These ones, we're going to start blending them into the other color. So it's okay if they go into the pink section a little bit. That's actually what you want. Let 
And then here too, making sure we follow through so it looks like it's one continuous section of hair. And then on this opposite side here, there we go. Oops, and we want to add a little bit of shadow to this front section of hair that's coming through these bangs. There. Okay, now I'm going to move on to V01. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. So V01, and this is where we're going to pull some more of these strands into the pink to really make them be one cohesive color shifting mermaid hair. So I'm just making these little wavy lines. I'm being more loose and free with these. And I'm pulling them all the way through the hair towards that pink. But you can see as you're doing this, you still have small little white highlights. And you still want to keep those, but you can do this as many times as you need to to blend this. Oh, thank you so much, Ebony. Thank you. And then last but not least, on this, this purple section, I want to just go over the darkest shadow area with my V09 one last time. Because I blended out some of these, I just want to make this pop since we did the same thing with the red down here on the pink. I'm just going to pull the darkest shadows one last time right here where the part of her hair is and then underneath her little hairline here. And probably here too. There we go. And then if you get any of those little sections where you get a little bit too dark, which I got right there, I colored it too purple, I'm just going to pull that highlight back through with my gel pen. And then I use my finger to tone it down. So before it's totally dry, you can smear it a little bit if you just use a, you know, a little wipe or cloth or your finger. But that makes it not as drastic of a highlight and it pulls that right back through so then you have that variation. All right so then last but not least we can add the little highlight to her eyes and her tongue and then we are all done with the coloring. So I'm adding a little dot onto the top of her tongue there and then two little dots onto her eyes. like that. And our mermaid is all colored and like I said I already have her pre-cut out so she can go right on our card that we're going to create now. So I'm going to go ahead and set her aside so we can create our card. And first what you're going to need is that card base which comes from the card base pack. And then right here, I'm going to be adding a gold mat first. This gold mat is just gold shimmer paper. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Um, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight and three fourths inches wide by about three and a quarter inches tall. And I'm just going to place this right into the center of the card base. I already added foam tape on the bottom. Oh, thank you so much, Anne. Thank you, Betty. Okay, so we're just adding the foam tape. I wanted to pre-do this so it didn't take so long watching me add all this. But then I stopped to remove the backings. And you guys, if you haven't picked up these slimline dies, they are definitely card staples. They're so much fun to create with for scenes especially. And with this, you have enough room to do, you know, whole mermaid scene, winter scenes, 
You have so much more room to work with using the slim line. Thank you, Dana. Okay, so I'm just going to center this and just put this like that. Okay, and press that down. Let me zoom this out a little bit since we're not doing the coloring anymore. Okay, so with that frame die, I used the Canson watercolor paper that you guys see me use a lot. And I cut the frame from white watercolor paper and then the center of the frame you're going to want to save. So I cut the center frame. I actually ended up cutting this two times so I layered these on top of each other. Oh good, yes, you're going to have so much fun creating with these. And then one of the centers I'm keeping for my, my base of this and the other center I kept and I used the under the sea dies. Let me grab them. These under the sea dies, and then the little border die here, like I did for my Christmas card for snow. This time I'm using it for the bottom of the ocean. I cut that with the slim line, just ran it through my machine, this extra piece here. So I know that it's going to fit perfectly into my card to layer for my ocean scene. So then that's going to be fitting right underneath there. When we put this together, I also cut out of that same watercolor paper from these dies a couple of the little corals, and we're going to ink blend those too. Okay, so we're going to start the ink blending now. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a quick ocean floor. This is one of my favorite ways to to ink blend and it's just so quick and it matches your project. So I'm using the Distress Ink in Chip Sapphire and you guys know for wood texture it's really fun to just drag your ink pad across but it also makes really awesome grounds for the bottom of an ocean. So I'm just literally pulling this straight across the white watercolor paper. I'm going to flip this around. I'm doing the same thing here and just pulling it, it across and deepening the shade as much as I want to with this. However colored you want this to be. Just like that. Then I'm going to take my little blending sponge and I'm just going to blend to this bottom edge So it doesn't look quite so much like a wood grain, it looks more like rock texture. So it's just smoothing out this bottom edge because in the ocean when it was when it's down further you're really not going to see all that detail. But where the light's hitting on the top edge is where you're going to see more of that rock texture. So that's what I'm trying to mimic here. So just blending out that bottom edge. Just like that. Now we have our ocean border. I'm just going to take my ink and go along the edge so we don't have a white edge showing. Same thing on this bottom portion. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing with our coral, this larger coral. So I'm just going to take my ink pad and I'm just going to rub this right across to color this. And you can see how cool it turns out by just doing that. And this works with any ink pad. It doesn't have to be distressed. I have the Stamp Anything inks too. We're going to be using for the orange corals. Okay. So just like that. And you can see I want these little edges to be a little bit more contrast. I'm going over them a couple of times. But look how cool. And it coordinates perfectly since we dyed it the same. It's going to look like a shadow in the ocean. And now we can go ahead and we can do our little orange corals. Maybe we'll do a red and an orange one. Let me quick clean off this ink. Got my super fun Stamp Anything chamois. Anne. Thank you for sending this over makes clean up a breeze. Okay, so these right here we're going to use the Stamp Anything inks. I've got right here we're going to use 
this really fun bright orange it's called tangerine and then we're going to use the red here too and this one is called crimson and what we're going to do is i'm just going to put a little paper underneath these really quick to catch up any of the dye so it doesn't this is how is a hybrid ink so you do want to wash it off quickly if you get it on your surfaces because you can't actually watercolor with this so when it dries it's permanent okay so I'm just gonna pull this ink right across just like I did with the distress and look at this fun bright orange this is gonna look so good on the ocean background so just pulling that straight across it's gonna pick up all that great texture just like that yes I love how big these chamois are these are like the size of four or so chamois in one it'll last you forever uh, the sand and snow piles that is the under the sea dye that's what I used for that under the C6 piece. I don't know if it's still in the shop available. And do we have any of those left? I don't know. Okay, so stamp anything crimson ink for this other coral. And again, just like before, we're going to pull this straight across. To pick up that texture. And there we go. Yes, the chamois are nice. They're really soft too, like really cushy. They really clean off your stamps really well because they're so, so fluffy, I guess. Okay, so now we have all of our little corals and our bottom of the ocean done. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to ink blend our ocean background. Let me pull this. Okay, so I'm going to be doing, I think, two different colors for our ocean. Let's go ahead and do some purple and then we'll do blue too. So I'm going to be using some oxide inks because I want to be able to get the little the little water droplet texture. So I'm going to be using Wilted Violet. I'm going to be using Dusty Concord. I'm going to be using Salty Ocean. Actually, no, let me use Peacock Feathers. Peacock Feathers and Chip Sapphire. So we're going to start with the purple. Let's see, she has purple hair there. We'll do purple on this side and then the turquoise over here. Or no, we'll actually switch that, I think, because we want her hair to really stand out. All right, guys, sorry, I'm being indecisive. We're kind of doing this right here, spur of the moment. Okay, so I'm going to start with my wilted violet. When you have the ocean coming down, you're going to have a lighter area in the center. So think of it like a pillar of light coming down, and then we're going to have a lighter shadow, and then you're going to have your darker shadow. So we are going to start blending from this right side with our purples and the left side with the peacock feathers. Kind of like how we blended her tail. I'm going to start on this right edge and pull this color towards the center until it goes white. I'm just using small circular blending motions onto this. This was the center of that nested or of that... Um, this slimline die right here, the slimline basic frame. This is the center portion I kept to use for this. So again, pulling the purple through. Concentrating my ink on this right edge and having it lifting the pressure as I'm doing my, my little circles here. So it goes to white in the center. And you want to do this multiple times to really build up this color. Hi, Wanda. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Kathy. So again, just pulling this color forward. Even though we're doing, like, you know, purple water that you don't really see purple water except for magical ocean venture storybooks or something, you still want to follow how you would do a normal um, ocean. 
So again, just pulling this color towards the center and really trying to get variation of a darker color towards the side. We're making this curve kind of arc. We're not doing it straight across. Yes, I use the same dye to make my snow. Let me grab my um, other card really fast and I'll show you guys. I have it right here. So this magical card right here, this dye and the slim line is exactly the same. So you can see the difference. You can make a full ocean. You can do here, sparkly snow, just depending on what you cut it with, what paper or what what inks you blend it with. So again, just pulling this to the side. Okay, now I'm going to move on to my dusty Concord and I'm going to deepen this right edge. So I'm using the same blending sponge. You guys can switch out if you want to, but I like using the same one because I still have a bit of color left over and it really blends nicely with that previous color. But that's where you want to go from your lighter color to your darker because it's really hard to go back to the lighter color if you've already put the dark ink on it. Okay. So just like that. And there we go. So now we have that shading from the lighter to the middle, middle tone purple to the darker purple. Now we're going to do the same thing but on the opposite side with our turquoise. So I'm actually going to flip this over because it's going to be easier for me to do this on the right side right handed. I'm going to quickly use my chamois to clean this ink up, the purple, so I don't pull that through this opposite turquoise side. So now I'm going to be using peacock feathers first. And exactly the same as we did before, we're going to start on this edge and pull this turquoise towards the center, fading it to white in the middle. Just like that. Pulling it towards the center, building up that contrast. And the key to these ocean backgrounds is really the layers. You're going to be adding quite a few layers of ink to build up this color. My chamois is um, moist, so what I did is I just get the whole chamois wet, then you wring it out, and I've had this chamois sitting here since the beginning of the live, and it's still, it's retained the moisture, so it's not wet at all, but it's wet enough to clean off everything, and that'll last you a few hours that way, and I live in Arizona, so it, you know, it's pretty dry here, so in an area where it's not quite as dry, it'll probably last even longer without having to wet it again. Okay, so now we've built up that color. Now what we're going to be doing is using the chip sapphire. And just like before, I'm going to be focusing on this edge, building up that darker tone, but still leaving that gradation. And remember to blend in this arc pattern. You don't want it to look like it's just stripes. You want it to look like it's the entire thing is blended together. Okay, so now we have our basic colors. Now up here at the top, we do want to pull in a little bit of color across the top with this turquoise. So I'm just pulling it for both colors just a few times, just barely dragging it across the top to blend that down. And then same thing on the bottom. We want just this light in the center. So again, just pulling it gently across 
I'm not pushing down on it. I'm literally just pulling it across the top. It's going to deposit just a small amount of color. And you can build up the color as much as you want by doing that. So I just tone that down a little bit. And now I'm going to be taking, I'm going to stick with the chip sapphire because it's actually going to blend to a darker purple in the purple section and a darker blue in the turquoise section. And I'm going to be using a little blending brush. Let me get one really fast. Okay, I have a blending brush here. I like these because they really get down into the stencil. And I'm going to be using the Sparkle and Shine stencil from the new release to add a little bit more texture to my ocean scene. Okay, so I'm going to start on this edge here. You're just going to line it up randomly wherever you think looks good. I'm going to load up my my little blending brush here and then I'm just going to go over these little stars and hearts let's see I have those upside down so I'm gonna flip it this way I'm just gonna rotate it so it has them both ways I mean really you're just adding some texture so it doesn't really matter So blending right over those with the chip sapphire, just adding some fun texture. Same thing on this opposite side. Making sure to focus on the edges mostly, you want those the darkest. And then I'm going to pull a little bit of this color on the bottom here. I mean your bottom part is going to be covered mostly by your bottom of the ocean floor, but you still want some of that texture pulling through. So I'm going to do a little bit there. There we go. So now we have those really fun little stars and hearts, but they're going to look like bubbles once we activate this ink. And you'll get just a few of them shining through. Okay, so again, cleaning off my surface here with the chamois. And now we can go ahead and activate this. This is the Sparkle and Shine stencil right here from the newest release. This is in the shop right now. It's still available. Okay, so I'm just going to take an old toothbrush and I'm just going to quickly just flick this right off of camera here so I don't get water all over the surface, work surface. So there we go. I just spritzed it a couple of times gonna let it sit for just a moment and then just dab up those water droplets so they look like bubbles in the ocean and then I'm going to take that same ink and I'm just going to go around the edges while that's drying I'm skipping this white section I'm not going on those edges because I don't want to close in that highlight if I ink blended right across that, it would look like a closed line. Oh, thank you, Ebony. Thank you for linking that. Okay, so there is our ocean background. Let's see. Okay, I think she will look good over the... Okay, yeah, so we're going to keep her like that. Okay, so now we have the card base that we put together. And we are going to take our little frame and we're going to glue this into the center of our gold section here. I'm just making sure which way my card is opening and closing so I don't put it on upside down. I'm going to just add some adhesive to this little frame. This would also make a really good shaker card too if you layered this up a couple times and put acetate on the top. You could add little little blue sequins in there would look really pretty too. Okay, so I'm just lining this up to the center and then pressing this down. I'm doing the frame first so I make sure I have that small little edge all the way around. It's going to help me when I go in to layer the rest of this because I'm actually going to pop dot the center up instead of nesting it flat. 
so it's a lot easier to do it this way. Okay, so now I'm just going to take some foam tape and add it onto the back of our little panel. And you just need a few. I'm going to add like four. Oh, thank you, Ebony. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just going to remove this. You can also use recycled cardboard or things to, instead of foam tape if you didn't have any of that. Just for some added dimension. Backing off. Okay. So now we're going to pull this back down here. And we're just going to line this right up and press down to the center of our card. And now we can take our little ocean border and we are going to go ahead and glue this on. You don't want to glue all the way to the top edge because some of these little seaweeds were going, or um, corals were going to nest behind this. So you want to just go along the base part there. And I'm just going to line this up to the bottom up for my ocean floor and then press that down. And then I'm going to take my little corals and I'm going to nest these in where I think would look good. Adding a couple of little glue dots to the back. This was watercolor paper is what I used. I ink blended onto the watercolor paper. It's Canson watercolor paper. After I'm done with this, I'll get the, the pad and show you. But yeah, I just ordered it off of Amazon. So let's see, I'm just going to nest that one right there. And now I'm going to take my other little corals and I'm going to nest them on. I'm going to layer a couple of these on top and then one more behind our ocean floor since this one would be coming up towards the top. There we go. And then I've got our little orange one here. I'm going to add to the other side. Yes, I'm super addicted to this paper. It's like literally all I use that and then the chipboard we have at Stamp Anything. Like that's pretty much all the paper I use. I don't even use pattern paper hardly at all anymore because I love just making my own with the stencils and the ink so it matches perfectly. Okay, so we have those. And then remember I was telling you guys about that magical die. So this is what I did. I did this off camera, but I'm going to tell you guys how I did this. So you can see right here, I just cut out the magical word die, and I have the top of it right here too. Let me show you. I have my little mermaid tray. Here's the top of that. I'm going to put it back in there so I don't lose it. Um, all I did is I cut it from watercolor paper and then cut it from chipboard as well. But before I glued them together, I just took some embossing powder. So I took a gold, I took a light brown, and a white, and I just mixed them together. And you can see that creates your own sand texture. So just brown, gold, and white. Just whatever your leftovers are, just save them and put them in a little jar, and it makes the perfect sand texture. So I just used them, I took the die cut. I used my Versamark ink pad and I just dabbed it right over the top of the die cut. Then I sprinkled those three embossing powders on top, shook it off, and then used my heat gun. And you can see every time it's going to be different because depending on which way the colors mixed, you've got instant sand. This is the chipboard that's available in the Stamp Anything shop. Let me show you guys. It comes. It comes in this really awesome package. You get a lot. I mean, look how many that is. That's a ton. They're six by six. And I mean, it's perfect for all your projects and it cuts with the dies perfectly. I mean, this was one pass with the die cut machine. I didn't have to use any special platform, no extra shims. It went right through with both the watercolor paper and the chipboard. Okay. So we've got this with the sand texture, 
and we've got our little mermaid. So we just need to add her on and we need to figure out where we want our sentiment to be. I think probably across the top somewhere would be cool this time. So yeah, probably like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put our mermaid on first, then I'll add the sentiment. So I'm just gonna use some foam tape again. Oh, thank you, Ebony, thank you for linking that. I appreciate it. And I'll show you guys the watercolor paper too in just a second. So I'm just adding foam tape to the back of her so I can pop her up, give her some more dimension. I'm going to add her right to the front of the card. Let's see, I think like right there will be good. And then I'm going to take this little die cut. And I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive to this and add our sentiment. And you could also do this sand texture with the embossing powder for this border too. You don't have to do it just on the sentiment. So just like that, our little sand magical sentiment. And I'm gonna take the little eye, just add a little dot up there and place that right on top. And then last but not least, I love taking a couple of little sequins. These, um, I think, are also available in the shop. They're just the little blue sequins. They're super pretty. Anne has like the best embellishments. If you guys haven't checked out the little clay slices and sequins she has, they're so pretty. And they're totally flat, so you don't have to worry about them getting knocked off your project, adding extra height to it. Okay, let me get some little tweezers so I can put these on easily. And I'm just going to decide where I think these would look good and add a couple to look like little bubbles. So again, just adding them where I think would look good. Maybe like one down here and one more over here by her side. I always do them in odd numbers so you know three or like five. And then one there. And there we go. Alright everybody that is the card for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed creating with me. I had so much fun creating with you guys. I can't wait to see what you guys make. And if you end up doing a mermaid card, please post it in our group and share. We love seeing what you guys create. Up oh, And let me show you really fast to the products one last time and I will show you that watercolor paper as well. So first, that really nice heavy duty chipboard is available in the shop. You get a lot. So I don't even know how many sheets that is, but it looks like, I mean easily, probably like 30 plus in there of chipboard. Cuts perfectly with all of the dies. I used the Sparkle and Shine stencil. I used our new mermaid from the release. Um, Cal Calliope, or Calliope, you're strange and wonderful. I know I totally butchered that name. I'm sorry. I'll have to find out how to actually say that name. But she's really one of my favorite stamps. Her little outline die. The magical word die. The slimline basic frames. That fun stitching. I used the under the sea dies. It's a six piece set. And then, last but not least, I use the Slim Card Bases. If you don't have the dies, will it go through a Big Shot? Um, I use a Big Shot, so it sh that the dies all go through it perfectly. 
so it should work just fine. The chipboard goes through without any extra platforms or anything. It just, it cuts perfectly. So definitely try that. And let me show you the watercolor paper too. This is the watercolor paper. It's just, um, I get the extra large one because I use it for all my projects, but just Canson cold press. This is a 30 pack, 140 pounds. So that's what I, I use. I get mine off Amazon for the watercolor paper. Okay, everyone. Calio Calliope. It's a really pretty name. I like it. Okay, everyone. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you guys all again soon.